Hi, Dr. Gary Ordog again uh, with another lecture on gain of function as related to SARS-CoV-2. And here we are at Alouette Lake and uh, the trees behind me, I believe that's an Alberta wild rose. Uh, then there's a beech tree right behind me and the one this direction is an apple tree and they're here on the beach of Alouette Lake which is in the Golden Ears Park and is a man-made lake uh, 102 years old today after it was clear-cut forest uh, and dammed up the river of the Alouette River forming uh, this lake. Uh, it's a landlocked lake and the salmon cannot get up here right now. They're trying to build a fish ladder up here. Okay, my uh, lectures on SARS-CoV-2, GOF or gain of function. And this has been in the news lately. Uh, I wrote several articles on this last year, about a year ago or over, over a year ago, uh, because I was worried about this at the time. And, uh, history has proven that uh, I was correct that uh, things may have gotten out of hand. Uh, no direct proof of it other than the, the multiple variants and mutations that are now circling the globe from SARS-CoV-2, the cause of COVID-19. So anyway, uh, there's been multiple mutations uh, since uh, 2019 when uh, SARS-CoV-2 first uh, appeared in China and then spread to the rest of the world, uh, probably taken by uh, travelers to uh, every other country on earth pretty well, or definitely. Um, now in originating in many parts of the world in many different countries have been uh, mutations and uh, they call these variants because sometimes the body is not immune even after a initial infection to the variant and I believe there have been many dozens of variants identified. Sometimes several per country have been identified, uh, including countries like England and South Africa have had several to many uh, different variants or mutations identified. Uh, the question is, do these countries have gain of function laboratories and is there some relationship to those laboratories? Now, the usual explanation is that the virus mutates itself uh, as it's growing and multiplying and passing uh, through an infected organism. Uh, it, it can and does and uh, is prone to mutation that either destroy the virus most of the time, or lead to disabilities of the virus, uh, but once in a while, achieve a gain of function of that virus. That is a selective advantage uh, to either reproduce uh, infectivity uh, is increased, uh, mortality, etc., are increased. It's called the gain of function. Now there are labs, many labs in many different countries, uh, including the one in Wuhan, China, uh, Wuhan Viral Institute uh, that do gain a function apparently allegedly uh, and we'll talk a little more about Wuhan uh, later on uh, but many countries including Switzerland was the first one uh, with articles in the uh, newspaper uh, doing gain of function on the SARS-CoV-2 and they were the actual first lab published in the newspaper to replicate uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus in 
the laboratory. And that's called gain of function laboratory. And many other countries have gain of function laboratories, uh, especially the United States, the CDC. Now the evidence and questions about uh, the USA funding the lab is the big question for uh, Wuhan, China, uh, and that gain of function laboratory. Uh, was the US directly involved? Uh, we do know from documentation that they were involved in funding and uh, supposedly uh, Anthony Fauci was also involved and supported the research and funding of that laboratory. Now, I believe Anthony Fauci to be a friend and I grew up think of him, thinking of him as a hero uh, in medicine and infectious disease. Uh, I always admired what he did and uh, this uh, is very questionable uh, whether he would actually support something like that but uh, who am I to say again I've always looked up to him always admired him um, but within the last two years uh, I believe he's bowed to political pressure to some degree and he's changed his opinions and kind of waffled on a lot of the COVID-19 topics, recommendations, etc. So if he would take any advice from me, I'd just tell him, you know, get your act together. Uh, like the older Bush said, stay the course and uh, don't waffle. Go scientific, do not go political, uh, and you'll be much better off. Uh, I still admire you, and hopefully you can get back to the standing uh, that you were before COVID developed. Uh, so please do. <laughs> uh, I am really not one to give you advice, obviously, but... Anyway, I don't know if I believe uh, you do look at a lot of my articles and presentations, so you may actually be listening to this. Anyway, good luck. Uh, God bless you and take care, but please stay scientific, uh, stay ethical, do not bow to the political corruption, and please uh, straighten out the gain of function problems with laboratories uh, if there is any problem at some of the laboratories please uh, fix that uh, I believe you do have an input and some of the power to do that okay anyway those are my personal opinions on the topic and again uh, Anthony Fauci one of my uh, great medical public health heroes Okay, what is gain of function uh, in the laboratory, in these laboratories? Uh, these, they are supposedly genetically engineering viruses to attack humans under the guise that this will allow development of methods of protection. Uh, now that is the definition on the internet. And I believe it was Google that said that. Uh, but they make it sound rather suspicious uh, that it is not actually for protection of humans, but for uh, some nefarious activities like a biological weapon or something like that. But uh, I'm not saying that is the case here. I'm just saying this is off of the internet and that's what they are saying. So the internet does not believe wholeheartedly in the development of methods of protection for human beings, or they do not believe that that's why these labs are doing that. And the labs are obviously run by the governments. The governments uh, may have various nefarious activities going on uh, for nefarious purposes, not just for the protection of humans. 
Okay, in Wuhan, again, this is from the internet, allegedly 80,000 animals were studied at this Institute of Virology uh, under some funding from the US, Dr. Fauci, but obviously doing gain of function research. 80,000 animals, that's a lot. And then you wonder uh, how good is the containment? Because obviously it did get away, got away from them. Uh, that is one of the theories. Uh, it's difficult to believe that it mutated from animals and has the uh, genetic materials of multiple, multiple species in it. Uh, unlikely to happen naturally, I would think, and so most people do. Okay, in the autumn of 2019, Wuhan Inf Infectious Institute of Virology scientists became ill with symptoms consistent with COVID-19. That is, it is COVID-19, not COVID-20, even though we didn't learn about it until the year 2020, but scientists were already sick uh, well into the year of 2019. The researchers who announced this, or the actual researcher, was the first to die of the disease, apparently. So that's kind of interesting. He was working at the lab, probably on gain of function, probably manipulating the COVID-19 uh, virus to be with uh, genetic engineering, altering the virus uh, for gain of function research and accidentally, or some people say purposely, was infected with the virus, uh, stepped outside of the Wuhan Viral Institute, uh, became ill, passed away, but obviously passed it on to other people because it was not properly contained within the laboratory. So I think there's a lot of, lot of research to do on this, a lot of investigation, a lot of follow-up. Uh, again, remember the papers are sealed. The Chinese government won't release any of the paperwork on this so that the truth can come out at least at the present time. Uh, but I'm sure there are people that do know the truth. Somebody has been through that paperwork. So anyway, some, someday, maybe, we will know the truth. But as the records are sealed, the public may not know the truth any time soon. So that is my conclusion. My big question, this was a year and a half ago, was are these GOF, gain of function laboratories, really worth it? Are they doing a good job containing the virus? They're producing bad viruses probably by genetic research. Is this really what we want to be doing? Is this really safe? And luckily this time it wasn't that bad. The mortality rate is less than 5%. But you know, what happens uh, when it's like a bad hemorrhagic Ebola or something, which they're probably experimenting with, I'm sure, as well. Uh, let's say it has a, over a 90% mortality rate. Uh, you know, maybe some people want that, but most people don't. <laughs> okay, again, unethical to uh, wish for something like that. Uh, that uh, seems rather evil if you ask me. Again, my opinion only, uh, not the opinion of, of anyone else uh, that I associate with or governments I associate with or government employees I associate with. Okay, uh, something to consider. Uh, should they all be closed, gain of function laboratories? Uh, I think they are extremely dangerous. Uh, think about it. Uh, let your government officials know. Uh, these are a potential, potential problem, as we have found out over the last two years. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, this ends uh, this videotape, end of dictation, as I would say, <laughs> because I dictated so many medical reports in the past uh, hundreds of thousands over the years. So I always say end of dictation. Anyway, end of dictation. Dr. Gary Ordog signing out from Alouette Lake in British Columbia, Canada. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, Gary Ordog, O-R-D-O-G. And enjoy your life, enjoy your day, stay happy, uh, stay free, stay independent, and eat well, stay healthy, and get your vaccination uh, so we can stop uh, this pandemic called COVID-19. Uh, off note, while we're waiting for the next one. Remember, there's been a hundred in the past. This is not the last one. Okay, on that sweet note, over and out.